Hey, my name is Nathaniel Fawson. I'm a professional archaeologist, and my channel is dedicated to the archaeology of North America, and in particular, the region that we call the Eastern Woodlands. Now, I know that I've been gone for quite some time. Um, I've Part of that's been because of travel. I was working on a project in Northwest Arkansas for several months, and then I was in Scotland excavating at a site called Ness of Brodger. And now I'm up in northern Michigan on the Upper Peninsula. So I've just had a lot going on. Uh, and I also have just not been in the mood for the kind of audiovisual editing and so on that these videos require. Uh, but I'm kind of more rested up now and kind of ready to get back to it. Um, so getting back into things today, I just wanted to make some uh, corrections and updates on some videos that I've made before. And all the ones that I talk about here, I'll put links to down in the description for this one. Um, so the first thing in the video, Scott Walter is a con artist and this show is garbage in which I explain why Scott Walter is a con artist and why his show is garbage. I said that there's no such thing as a forensic geologist. That is not technically true. There is a small, uh, kind of subfield within a criminal investigation that deals with geology and Walter is making this claim of being a forensic geologist based on the fact that he was a uh, concrete analyst after 9-11 on the World Trade Center, uh, which is technically a, a criminal, um, a, a form of like legal investigation. So it does technically count as forensic geology. I still consider using that title on the show to be deliberately misleading because when people hear the word forensic, they tend to think high tech or scientific, uh, when it actually means it has to do with the legal system. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, uh, regarding the mounds on Louisiana state university's campus, several archeologists wrote a response to that original study that I reviewed before. Like I said, I'll link that below and their response. Their primary argument isn't that 10 to 11,000 years old is too old for mound construction to have been uh, a part of indigenous culture, um, but that the, the bands of soil down at the base of the mounds might not be from fires that were burned in situ, uh, but instead from centuries of brush fires in the near surrounding area. And then those phytolith rich soils were used to construct the mound. Uh, well, the mounds, uh, plural. Um, they point out that the Humberg, the original Humberg analysis of the, the soil cores showed that these uh, allegedly ashy burned in C2 bands actually have more silt and sand than the soils above and below them, which is inconsistent with in C2 burning. Um, they also talk about how phosphorus levels in these uh, ashy soils um, aren't what we would expect if there were actual actually cremations going on. Um, phosphorus from burned bone is mostly stable, so if these supposed ashes were actually from funeral pyres like they're talking about uh, in, the, in the Elwood study, then the soil should be enriched in phosphorus, but they actually have very low phosphorus compared to what's surrounding it. Uh, so that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense with the original argument. And of course, if the ashy soils do represent in situ burning, then the soils directly beneath these ashes should be affected by, by that heat. They should be hardened. They should turn orange from the iron in the soil oxidizing, not unlike what we see on the edges of used fire pits. So uh, those signs are absent here. And they make several other arguments, but I think uh, that these are the most compelling arguments against the Elwood study and kind of the easiest to, to get your head around. They also list several studies that could be done to further support or contradict the Elwood study um, that claims that the mounds are as old as 10,000 years old, including optically stimulated luminescence, which is one of the uh, uh, methodologies that I mentioned back in the original video. So after reading this rebuttal, I tend to agree that a middle archaic age for these mounds makes a lot more sense, somewhere in the ballpark of uh, five or 6,000 years ago. So finally, the white sands footprints. These footprints are responsible for my most viewed video. And the gist of the argument is that the uh, grass seeds are embedded in these footprints that date to about 22,000 years ago. And I pointed out at the time that there, uh, it's possible that there's a slight offset 
in those uh, ages due to what's called the reservoir effect, which is caused by old carbon-14 that gets dissolved into water and is used by plants coming up through the sediment. I just need to make a quick correction. The reservoir effect is caused by old carbon that's depleted in carbon-14 being dissolved into the water supply and getting into the substrate of the soil that the plants are grown in. It's not old carbon-14. It's carbon that's depleted in carbon-14 because it is old. Uh, but what I didn't know is that the grasses that were being dated um, specifically grow underwater. Uh, when I was first reading the paper, it sounded like these were like marshland grasses where they grow in mud and have kind of a an amount of water at their base, but they mostly grow in the air. And so they're photosynthesizing and pulling normal atmospheric carbon instead of this like submerged um kind of contaminated carbon from from underwater but it turns out these are actually fully aquatic grasses not wetland grasses um so that can throw uh dates off much further than what wetland grasses would um in the order of you know as much as a few thousand years um uh, based on some other aquatic species of grasses so the as far as I'm concerned, the jury is still completely out on white sands. It's going to need more uh, investigation and use a few other dating methodologies to really corroborate or contradict the um, the dates that we got back from those from those seeds. The fact that the seeds still do appear to be in pretty good sequence um, chronologically suggests to me that they, they still might be perfectly fine radiocarbon dates. We just can't be sure yet until we use something like an OSL date or something like that. Well, that's all I have to say about that. I look forward to your questions down in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching.